So a couple of things that I want you to see on the jerk strip. In this particular case, because I'm going across and I, I'm coming back at me, and the water's going pretty fast here, right? So I don't, I'm gonna get a, no matter what I do, I'm gonna get a swing, I'm gonna get a belly in my line. And that is what you encourage when you're doing this. So you're going, because as soon as you lay that line out and there's a belly in the middle because the surface is fast, your fly sinking a little bit, anything you do with your rod tip is going to make that fly move. If you, and you used to see people, they would throw out here, they would throw it and they put this mend in it like that. Well, that's great if you want a dead rip, but that's not what you're trying to do here. What you're trying to do is let the line or the water work against your line for you. So I want you to see a couple things. One, when I throw out here and I start my retrieve, I don't, I don't end up over here with my line, my back to the fly because I strip as much line as I jerk on the line and impart the action. So when I hit it, tap, tap, I strip that much excess. It always keeps going back at me and I kind of follow it around its swing. But I want you to see something else in a cross current like this. If that line hits the water, I can go upstream like this and do exactly the same thing because of that bow. And because the bow takes a long time to come across, I keep that fly going broadside all the way across. So you can go either with it below, like this. You can start, tap, start, return. Every time I hit the rod like that, I pull the line, I pull the line. Every time I do it, I tap it, tap it. And you'll notice I, I pick up the same distance. Whoa, little bumper. I pick up the same amount, and that's the key. You've got to pick up the same amount or more of what you pull. Otherwise, you keep getting behind yourself. And then the other way to run one of these is simply to let the line go straight across, hit it, and just go to your left in this situation, and I can just keep tapping the rod, and the fly just comes across. And every time I tap it, the fly gets one of those little kicks in its hind end. And so now I'm gonna put on a Nancy P, which is a jiggy fly, so I, two parts. One, I went through burning it jerk strip. And I, and, and I can't overemphasize this, uh, that none of it, nobody that fishes this stuff a lot does one thing. We don't just burn the flies. Everything's about having diversity, changing it up, changing it up. You got one, if all you can do is pull the rope, that's all you got. If all you can do is jerk strip, that's all you got. Learn a lot of techniques. Learn different ways. Now I went through that thing with a slick willy. One of our buddies is downstream fishing it right now and he's just killing it. We're not killing it on the slick willy. It's two hours later, that could be it. But you go from color changes, then you've got to have a cadence change or a, a retrieve change. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna put on a, a peanut envy, excuse me, a Nancy P, and I'm going to jig this through this run, just this, this soft water down here. It's still pretty fast and it's pretty deep. I mean, not real deep, four foot maybe. And I'm going to take this fly and I want to show you just how I would do it. I would go through really, I love to burn flies. It's super fun. When they get an eat, you can, a lot of times you see them coming racing, but that's only half the time. It doesn't work all the time. That's why you have to have backup retrieves. And so my backup is basically <clears throat> always a jig. And when I, I talk about it in my books and videos constantly, I basically have two retrieves. And it's just how fast you do them, whether which one you're using. A jerk strip is crossed, you know, is going horizontal like this. A, jer a vertical jig is simply the same movement, but it goes up and down like that. And I tell you, if you can't get the jerk strip down in the beginning, because everybody wants to start with the jerk strip because it's fast and they think they're gonna rip on some big fish. If you can't get it down, start with a vertical jig. It's exactly the same move, just from one plane to another. Instead of being a horizontal plane with your rod, 
you're going to go vertical plane, but the same ha uh, line handling technique's the same. So you're going to you're going to jig this fly, and you're still, you know, to think that with a fly line that's sinking, you're not getting all of this like that. You're simply getting a fly to do like that because your line's heavy in front of it. But if you cannot get the jerk strip down in the beginning, if it's fighting you, I want you to see what the difference is right here. So if it was a jerk strip, I would be going like this. And I would be jerking the rod strip in the excess, jerking the rod strip in the excess. Most people, when they start that, do, they go, they jerk and strip at the same time, and they end up with their ass pointing back that way. And so, to stop that, to get you used to the, to doing them at the uh, opposite time, so with a jerk strip, you jerk the rod, strip the excess, jerk the rod, strip the excess, jerk the rod, strip the excess. With a vertical jig, instead of going sideways, I'm going to pick the rod up, strip the excess, pick the rod up, jerk, drop the excess, like that, right? I pick it up, and you can do it with multiple movements too. Go out, and I just go up, pick up, twitch, twitch, drop the excess, pick up, drop the excess. What I want you to notice is that I do not pile the excess. I do not jerk like go up, up, and drop the line. Watch how it's rhythmic. So I pick up, I, the, the drop is the same amount of line as that I picked up. So when I throw it out here, I pick it up, drop the excess, pick it up, take out the excess, pick it up, take out the excess. I want you to realize it is exactly the same movement, just in different planes. One goes sideways, one goes up and down. So you get into here, you pick it up, drop the excess, pick it up, drop the excess, just like that. No quick movements, you don't want to have a pile of line in front of you. And the same thing on the jerk strip. If you'll start it slow where you go pull, pull the excess, jerk the rod, pull the excess, pull the rod, jerk, the, you know, bump out to that. Got backwards on that one. Don't jerk and strip at the same time. So if you go slow on the jerk strip, pull it, pick up the excess, pull it, pick up the excess, pull it, pick up the excess. Then by in, a, in 10 minutes, you'll have it down. And by the way, the vertical jig is so valuable. We are, it's, it's 80 degrees today and it's mid-September, late September, pretty rare. Water's still pretty warm. In the spring, when you really find your giant fish, it's contrary to what people think that falls when you really find the giants, falls when you find the all colored up ones. But in the spring is generally when you're gonna find your really big fish because they're coming off of a winter, they're hyperphagic, they wanna feed and you have a lot better shot. In the fall, your fish, all they wanna do is make babies. And so, and I, I don't, I like the early season fall, then I like late season, but I don't like to fish them when they're on the beds. And so, in the spring, when your water temperatures are low, if you've only got a jerk strip, if all you can do is rip your fly through there, you're leaving most of your fish on the table. So if you can get used to slowing your fly down, still getting a rhythmic movement to it, a little of this going on by doing a vertical jig, pick up the tip, drop it, pick it up, drop it, pick it up. It's a more, it's a little more lethargic, right? It's a little bit less hauling ass, I'm gonna get away from you, which is a reactionary bite. Reactionary bites are great if they're on a reactionary bite, meaning they're willing to chase. If they're not willing to chase, you have to have another game. That's when you start doing a vertical jig. You simply pick it up, drop it. You're getting your fly up, drop it. If you watch, I like to double step mine. That is not, it doesn't matter if you do a single or a double, but if you watch, I kind of tap it twice, tap it twice, and see how I pick up that excess? There's no big plopping it down like that. A lot of times, you will see your line You'll, you'll be watching it like this, you'll pick it up. This water's kind of quick, not too quick, but you'll see your line just kind of tap or go soft. It means something's eating it. Usually when you're getting a bite on a, jerk, on a, a vertical jig, 
it's a food bite. It's not really ripping out, oh, I gotta kill that minnow. It's something that they know is alive and they just swim up to it and bite it, right? They don't attack it all the time like they do a reactionary fly. And with that, you need to be paying attention to your line and looking where the fly is, because a lot of times with a vertical, and by the way, the vertical jig is not just for pools like this. I do it up above here. There's a big boulder field and below here, I do a ton of vertical jig with crayfish in particular. Whenever there's broken pocket water, we're gonna go downstream and I'm gonna do it down there too. But it's not just for soft water, but it is tends to be a lot more effective in colder water than a jerk strip will be. Reactionary bites, really hard to get a fish to go crazy and just race out after stuff if the water's cold. So I would encourage you to have two different retrieves, jerk strip, vertical jig. And remember, one, the jerk strip is speed and the vertical jig is kind of a natural, methodical little up and down, nice and slow, still giving the fish movement but it's doing things that when a fly goes up and down, it's usually imitating either a crayfish or some sort of injury. So you can do it with any fly you want. I just tend to do a lot. I love crayfishing. I, I just think that there are no crayfish that I know of in this upper river, but they eat the heck out of them. They don't know there's none here. Maybe they think it's the first one ever. So I hope you enjoyed that. I was just trying to get across it. I like to have at least two different types of retrieves. One's horizontal, that's the jerk strip where you jerk the rod and you're trying to pulse the fly kind of fast. That's really a, a reactionary bite thing. And then I showed you the, the vertical jig. Cold water in particular, jiggy flies, crayfish, wounded bait minnows, stuff like that. It just gives you a it gives you a different rhythm as opposed to everything going across. Like if, if you're somebody that just pulls the rope like this, that's usually a fast retrieve and it's associated with a reactionary bite. Same with the jerk strip. That's horizontal where your rod tip's going this way. And then we did the, jerk, the vertical jig. Just pick up and strip the excess. Pick up, super effective when you've got cold water or you just want to change your profile. Hopefully you get that and practice a little bit. I guarantee it'll up your A game.